massive structures are symbolic of man's belief that he can conquer nature's most powerful force. But dams aren't foolproof, and when they collapse, the results are spectacular and devastating. June 5th, 1976, Fremont County, Idaho. The newly completed Teton Dam stands glistening in the sun. Behind it, the reservoir is full from the recent runoff of spring rains. But at 7.30 a.m., a leak appears. Engineers expected some seepage, but this is too much, and it's growing. Three and a half hours later, this trickle is now a gaping, gushing hole 25 feet across. Within minutes, engineering geologist Brent Carter flies over the site. Uh, we had a failure on our hands. I thought, wow, what's happening to the people? You could see houses being taken down. You could see everything happening. And of course, had a knot in the stomach, felt sick, that, uh, boy, the, the actual worst thing happened here. Absolutely the worst thing. The Teton Dam collapses at 11.57 a.m. 80 billion gallons of water crash into the Snake River Plain below. Just two miles downstream, Daryl Grigg and his best friend, David Benson, are enjoying a fishing trip. The water was clear and the fishing was really good. And then all of a sudden I looked up and then around the corner, here come a huge wall of water. And to this day, I don't know how tall it was. I'm guessing approximately 50 feet high or whatever. I don't, I don't really know. Within seconds, David and Daryl are engulfed. I just kept going down the river. And at one point I did see David and I, nothing I could do. And a big wave came and busted everything up. Everything broke inside. I just felt everything break. I wasn't doing so well then after that. This wall of water smashes its way down the valley, ripping up trees, cars, and houses. Traveling at speeds of up to 10 miles an hour, it's impossible to outrun its onslaught. I do remember going across the Teton Highway, and then my shoe got ripped off there. I got washed into a tree from there, and I just passed out. There was one fellow over there, and he was hollering for help. So we managed to get a boat and a motor, and. Three of the fellows went across and found he had a collapsed lung and a big wave had put him up in that tree. And you can see it's about 10 feet up there. His name is Daryl Griggs. I never was scared the whole time. It's, it might sound strange, but uh, I just knew I was, gonna, I was gonna die. I knew it. And I don't know what David did. I, I, I really don't. I don't know if he stood there and let it hit him or if he jumped in too. But. Daryl's rib cage was shattered, one lung collapsed, and the other filled with water. His best friend David had been killed by the torrent. He was floating face down in the river, just probably 15 feet away from me. And there was just no way I could get to him. Little do we know at this point in time the loss of life here in eastern Idaho. David Benson was one of 11 people who died when the Teton Dam collapsed. 7,000 homes were destroyed and $1 billion of damage was inflicted. The structure that failed so catastrophically was an earthen dam, a design used around the world for centuries. A central core of silt is surrounded by other layers of soil and rock. Some water is expected to seep through. But the engineers usually install a filter to prevent the water from carrying soil particles that might erode the dam wall. This was the best site for availability of earth materials, but there was a couple of Achilles heels there 
that really hadn't been totally thought, thought actually through. The dam was built in an unusual geological setting. The rock bed was full of cracks. Water could get through. To stop it, the engineers pumped the rock full of cement. Well, when they first started, I remember all the grout they had to put in to the walls, and, they, and I'd heard rumors that they really couldn't fill them up, you know. But then I figured that they must have got it so it'd work. But they kind of messed up on this. But the engineers were confident no water could get through. They decided they didn't need a filter, even though the local silt they were using could be eroded by water. This was a fatal flaw. Without the filter, a process known as piping began. The dam was barely completed when the water started eating it away from the inside. The 1976 flood in the Snake River Plain was a man-made deluge. The engineers got the science wrong, but it's an isolated case. There are 20,000 large dams around the world. Some, the most expensive ones, are concrete. The rest are earthen, like Teton. In the last 50 years, only one half of 1% have failed. The overwhelming majority continue to stand strong against the might of nature. But the dam is just one weapon in man's armory in the battle against the relentless onslaught of the deluge. In any war, different battlefields demand different tactics. To improve defense, we must learn from the failure of previous strategies. At the start of the new millennium, cities built on coastal or river locations are under threat from nature as never before. Across the globe, they must confront the combined forces of global warming and rising sea levels. A massive storm surge is heading down the North Sea towards London. London is under threat. It's large enough to cause severe flooding in central London. All underground services have been suspended. Six hospitals are at risk. 1,500 patients are being evacuated. $600 billion worth of property line the banks of the River Thames. Many of the city's 7 million inhabitants live just a few feet above sea level. With all routes out of the city gridlocked, it's now feared there will be massive loss of life. A major flood would turn the center of an undefended London into a watery wasteland. Closed the four navigation channels. Closing the gates, Charlie and Pottery. But London is defended. The ten mighty gates of the Thames Barrier stand guard at the edge of the capital. It's this barrier that stands between London and a catastrophic flood. We have now hydraulically closed the river. Today it's just a drill, but the next time the gates of this massive defense are raised, it could be for real. London is at risk from a major flood. A monument to previous disasters on the Thames, the barrier was built after a flood almost destroyed the center of London. On the night of February 1st, 1953, Canvey Island, just 35 miles east of London, was inundated by the North Sea. Fifty-eight people died in this sparsely populated area. London escaped disaster by sheer luck. Had the storm surge coincided with high tide, the resulting flood would have reached London with catastrophic results. As if by luck, the earth embankments around Canvey Island failed at about the right time on the rising tide. It was like a massive safety valve blowing and millions of tons of water flowed onto less densely populated areas, which actually saved London.